Welcome to the Intentional Success Podcast, where we unpack the top strategies, explore business trends, and drill down into best practices to help your live events production business grow and scale on purpose. I'm your host, Tom Stimson. Welcome to today's podcast. If your business did not make an incredible profit in 2023, then it's time to take a hard look at yourself. Keep listening. Well, when you when you come to the end of a year, how do you feel? Really? Do you feel exhilaration? Do you feel regret? Do you feel worry? I mean, explore that feeling for a moment. Here we are, December of 2023. How you feeling? Are you feeling reflective? Are you thinking about the future? We're all a little bit different, but there's something unfortunate about using the calendar to start and end a business year because it's completely arbitrary. Business never stops, right? Yet here we are reflecting and forecasting right before we all sit down with friends and family for the holidays. When in fact, thinking about our business is something we should be doing all year long. There's nothing special about January 1, except, you know, maybe a hangover. So 2022, I know this is 2023, 2022, was a perfect storm of windfall demand. Remember that? We had revenge meetings for three quarters of the year. We had a constrained supply chain. There weren't enough workers, talent, equipment, trucks, drivers. Costs were through the roof. Customers would pay whatever you asked if you could only just do the work for them. You turned down work. You, You turned down work. And the globe kept spinning. Man, what a rush. We will never forget 2022. Or maybe of your your memory of that year is a little bit different. So there were three types of sellers in 2022, right? Here's how I look at it. As I reflect back on the previous year, 2022, I have three groups. The first group I'm calling the faithful. You know, they're the faithful, their loyalty is to the traditions and the familiar. It's not that they're rooted in the past as much as they're ready for it to return, right? My diagnosis of many of those companies was that they were typically addicted to revenue, which is a whole other podcast in in itself. In fact, it will be a future podcast. The addiction to revenue is real. And that's what a lot of the faithful had. You know, revenue is what solves all their problems. And as a result, they kind of had not a lot of reins on how their pricing or selling worked. They they lacked insight into their forecasts, and they weren't really diligent about updating prices as costs changed. So in 2022, they found themselves promising to do work that was far beyond their capacity at prices that probably wouldn't buy a cup of coffee today. And with the overtax supply chain, they cut a lot of corners. So in 2022, the faithful struggled. They often failed their customers in 2022 because while they had record-breaking revenue, ugh, they couldn't fulfill it to their standards or their customer standards. They made what I call dirty profit. They didn't meet expectations and they still cashed the check. Buyers remember who these companies were. Faithfuls didn't compensate for the unreliable supply chains. Instead, They refused to book extra hands. They hire an extra truck. They gambled their customers' money on the hopes that everyone would show up and everything would get there on time because job cost was more important than delivering what you promised. And if you chase revenue, job cost is the only way you have to control profit. And in short, they were overselling and they were under-delivering. Well, it was tough. It was a tough time to be selling and not fully prepared for the realities of the marketplace. So not everybody was in that boat. Not everybody would be the faithful. We also had a group called the optimists. Optimists saw 2022 as a temporary problem. Hmm. Well, they're inherently more cautious, even though they're optimistic, because they had been creeping up pricing as they moved back into those heavy in-person events. Right? They turned down jobs very early in 2022 when they reached their breaking point. They padded their crews. They sub-rented complete shows across country rather than risk interstate trucking. They looked at what was going on and said, hey, we can survive this. And 
as a result, they were more successful, right? They made a lot more money than the than the the faithful did. Uh, they probably slept a lot better because they had fewer crises. You know, we, we all heard the stories about people ordering a twenty person crew uh, for an eight a.m. setup and having three people show, right? Bad things happened that people weren't prepared for and didn't hedge for. And what really sets the optimist apart is that they let themselves and their customers believe that these added costs and these supply chain limitations were temporary. They didn't make the fundamental changes they needed to maintain this kind of response, this kind of preparation. So in effect, their carefulness was really a tactic. It wasn't strategic. They didn't think they were going to have to do it forever. Which brings me to the third group, which I call the realists, right? They saw 2020 for what it was, right? They played 2021 like a violin and they rode 2022 to record profit and revenue without increasing overhead because their superpower was judiciously turning down work. They adjusted their prices. They, they had to make every product and every service a profit center and they became laser focused on serving their ideal customers. They didn't need to take business from anybody else because they were so clear on what they needed to be doing and they understood how to dial in the value for that customer. Realists were thinking five steps ahead all the way back to the before times, right? The first thing they did in 2020 was they accepted that equipment technology was now and forever going to be a commodity. So they focused on selling solutions and outcomes. I mean, they quickly realized that sometimes inexpensive gear would solve a complex problem. You know, they could send out a black magic switching rig that would run an entire show instead of sending out the $400,000 switcher system they used to use. They could use an 8K video camera, you know, prosumer video camera instead of a broadcast camera with a $100,000 lens. They were willing to change how they fulfilled projects in order to deliver the outcomes the customers were looking for. And they priced differently. Instead of renting a studio to their customers, they charged for a service, a properly produced video. They happened to use a studio as one of their tools. And instead of renting streaming tools or renting time on a platform, they produced a streamed event for a high profit. Their gross profit per project soared because they abandoned the commoditized line item thinking and rental mindsets that we all grew up with. As in-person events came back in 2022, they continued to charge higher fees for talent and services. They would not accept the lower gross profit of the before times. In 2022, it was very easy to demand top pricing. Realists reset their perception of where value is created and what those services were worth. And 2022 was a very, very good year for realists. 2022 taught us some hard lessons, but not everyone listened, right? But I'm supposed to be talking about 2023. I don't think anybody's going to remember it. It's pretty uninteresting. Why will no one remember 2023? It's unremarkable. Yeah, supply and demand shifted. Supply increased, demand dropped a little bit, but demand still exceeds supply, but not as by as much as it did before. And if you were the faithful, that first group that didn't pay attention to pricing and forecast, if you chased revenue without a clear strategy, 2023 was business as usual, kind of like 2019. Sell on price and hope you have enough internal resources to do the work so that you could find enough resources in the supply chain to fill out your orders. Eh, we'll make it work, okay? But we're going to try and do it internally. The faithful did not bring much additional differentiation to their products, to the marketplace. My worry is that these companies took their 2022 revenue results and made that their 2023 forecast and probably sprinkle some more on top of that. Oh, we'll grow 10%. <laughs> no, the chase for revenue instead of profit was codified in selling strategies that were never sufficiently updated. So many of these companies did not see the revenue results in 2023 that they did in 2022. And it's because they didn't understand what the marketplace was looking for. Price shoppers, bless their hearts, 
They returned in 23. Yeah, they're back. The faithfuls probably felt their strategy was justified because their old buyers were back. However, the supply chain had other ideas. You don't just market correct something like labor rates and then expect to pull the rates back again when the market changes. It just doesn't work that way. Your costs are going to continue to go up. They're not going to go down when it comes to talent, for instance, which is 50% of our revenue, right? Or at least it should be. And the result was that many of the faithful were forced to hire subpar workers disguising themselves as mid with mid-level day rates, right? Hey, this person must be good if they get six fifty a day. We'll charge eight hundred. That's that'll work. Guess what? <laughs> it doesn't work. And they weren't that good. The good people were already booked with better production companies, probably at higher rates, and those companies were charging a thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars a day for talent. And their shows are going really, really well, and they're making a ton of money. The faithful have found twenty twenty three to have decent demand, but even lower margins. They unintentionally opened the doors for price shoppers to return to the marketplace. And there they were holding up their arms ready for them. Now, optimists fared better, right? The optimists struggled to raise their prices. Instead, they focused more on streamlining processes and improving their outsourcing. You know, we'll fix this internally. And it led to mixed results, right? Many of these companies, because they were focused so internally on how to make their systems and processes work better, that they took their eye off their sales pipeline. And they relied too much on the success of 2022 to carry over into 2023. Now, their processes may have been better defined and documented, but only on the operational side. You know, they took their eye off the ball on the selling side. And buyer habits shifted quickly in 2023 from 22, right? Revenge meetings were over. Budgets were reined in. And the buyer channel had discovered that there were a lot more companies out there than they had ever named, seen before. You see, one of the problems of the before, before times is that because everybody sold on price, you didn't have to move around much. You didn't have to get a bunch of quotes. Okay, There's too much gear and too many employees in the marketplace that drove prices down. It made it easy to retain clients because all you had to do was dangle a lower price and they'd hang around for another year. In 2022, a buyer might have needed to ask 10 companies to find out find one that would even give them a price, much less do the show. Those buyers remember who was helpful. They remember who returned their phone calls during their search for help. And now they know 10, 20, or 30 more companies than they did before. So now they can shop around. Now they can find themselves a better fit. We're seeing a lot of clients and jobs shift suppliers. Okay? Optimists were underprepared for this normalization. They were caught in mid-pivot. Right. We pivot process wise. Well, we didn't pivot our sales strategy and they focused more on the output of doing the shows than on the inputs it takes to get the shows done. Now, realists proved in 23 that they were the masters and are the masters of the pivot. That word you all love to hate. They pivoted to virtual in 2020. They capitalized high margins on services using 20% of the staff they had in the before times. In 2021, they increased their market share. They kept their overhead down. They used outside crews for all execution. They eyed the potential return of in-person events mm, a little incredulously, very carefully. They weren't ready to give up their profits. So in 2022, they were very selective about which companies they did live events for and what margins they were willing to accept. Their streaming clients continued to receive priority treatment. The RFP shoppers got shut down quickly. Hybrid shows were fully embraced. So 2023 for realists was a drop in revenue. For most of these companies, including the realists, everybody saw a drop in revenue, but lower overhead realists were able to maintain a very strong net profit working for ideal customers. They protect their job margins they didn't fall back into the old habits. Realists leveraged their improved understanding of the marketplace, their ideal buyer, their project budgeting, and they turned that into maybe even profitable growth, but they could also shrink profitably. So they made permanent changes and they're still evolving. 
They are filling their sales funnels from the top down instead of just focusing at the bottom of the funnel by cranking out quotes. It's a huge difference, a huge difference. But you might say, Tom, that's all good and fine. What's my outlook for 2024? Tom, what do you think is going to happen? Well, I'll share it with you very quickly. Look, I see a lot of sales forecasts. I mean, every single week. There are, there are opportunities seem to be overflowing. For RFP-driven work, RFPs seem to be in abundance. The expectations are higher. Geography seems to be less and less of an issue. What does it cost to get the job done? I don't care if you're trucking. Just don't show me that number. Just tell me what it costs. Buyers want event partners and will take them wherever they go to do events. And that's a great new normal for us to embrace. And at the very least, buyers are asking for better services and they're willing to pay more for it, which means that price shoppers and price sellers kind of stand out in the crowd now. And that's not a bad thing because maybe they'll find each other so we can focus on more valuable things. So there's a ton of business out there from what I'm seeing. I'm you know, if it, if it wasn't optimistic, I would tell you I'm pretty optimistic about the next year. It's going to be another great, unmemorable year, just like we want. So there's a ton of business out there. They're ready to try new suppliers. Are you the company they're looking for? Are they looking for a company like yours? What are you doing about it? Are you ready? So conclusion, look, I'm going to wrap this up by saying, that we will look back on 2023 as a boring year. We're going to forget this year extremely quickly. It was either a return to old school business, which is familiar and comfortable, or it was a revisit of the same funnel problems that we've always had. But hopefully you think like a realist and you'll say that 2023 was business as usual, which means the playing field is always changing. We are always evolving. Companies that keep their eye on the market and adapt their business accordingly never take a rest. For those companies, I hope 2024 and beyond continues to be successfully unmemorable. Thanks for listening. If you want to find out more about today's episode, go to trstimson.com slash podcast, where you'll find the show notes, related links, and tons of other valuable resources. If you haven't already subscribed to the Intentional Success Podcast, please do so, and I'd greatly appreciate if you would rate and review the show. Also, if you think you might be a good fit to work together or want more information about the Stimson Group, I'd love to hear from you. Visit trstimson.com for more information.